I could stop and just weep right here, guys, but I'm trying to get through this. This was preceded by the correcting of the people's views of true worship. Number one, to give unto God, not to receive. Well. Number two, to please God, not to please ourselves. This is their view of true worship. Therefore, looking to God and forgetting the enemy, mm -hmm, and also the fear of men, we prayed and the Spirit descended. I pray God to hear your prayer, to keep your faith strong, and to save California. I remain your brother in the fight. Evan Roberts. That was written on November 14, 1905. This was the third letter I had received from Wells, says Frank, from Evan Roberts, and I feel their prayers had much to do with our final victory in California. Evan Roberts tells us of his own experiences with God. Now you guys listen to this. This is Evan Roberts telling about the encounters that began in his life. One Friday night last spring, this is Evan Roberts speaking, while praying by my bedside before retiring, I was taken up to a great expanse without time or space. It was communion with God. Before this, I had had a far-off God. I was frightened that night, but never since. So great was my shivering that I rocked the bed, and my brother, being awakened, took hold of me, thinking I was ill. Evan Roberts experienced this every night, guys, for three months from 1 a.m. until 5 a.m. He wrote a message to the world about this time as follows. Okay, my lovey. Yes, California's an old station. That's why this is so on point, guys, because we know what's going on in California. When we hear this, we got to know this is what God is doing. We are in the beginning stages. We are in the infant stages. I know by the Holy Spirit that we are in the infancy stages of this, guys. Okay, listen to what Evan Roberts says about his experiences being visited by the presence of God for three months every night from 1 a.m. until 5 a.m. The revival in South Wales is not of men, but of God. He has come very close to us. There is no question of creed or of dogma in this movement. We are teaching no sectarian doctrine, only the wonder and beauty of Christ's love. I have been asked concerning my methods. I have none. <laughs> I never prepare what I shall speak. This is true about me, as Monday. <laughs> I don't even prepare what I'm going to tell you guys. I just sit down and the Holy Spirit shows me. I never prepare what I shall speak, but leave that to Him. I am not the source of this revival, but only one agent among what is growing to be a multitude. I wish no personal following, but only the world for Christ. I believe that the world is upon the threshold of a great religious revival, and I pray daily that I may be allowed to help bring this about. Wonderful things have happened in Wells in a few weeks, but these are only a beginning. The world will be swept by His Spirit as by a rushing, mighty wind. Many who are now silent Christians will lead the movement. They will see a great light and will reflect this light to thousands now in darkness. Thousands will do more than we have accomplished as God gives them power. What beautiful humility, Frank says. This is the secret of all power. An English eyewitness of the revival in Wales wrote, Such real travail of soul for the unsaved I have never before witnessed. I have, seen young, I have seen young Evan Roberts convulsed with grief and calling on his audience to pray. Don't sing, he would exclaim. It's too terrible to sing. Conviction has often been lifted from the people by too much singing. Another writer declared it was not the eloquence of Evan Roberts that broke men down, but his tears. He would break down crying bitterly for God to bend them in an agony of prayer, the tears coursing down his cheeks, his whole frame writhing, wreathing. Strong men would break down and cry like children. Women would shriek. 
The sound of weeping and wailing would fill the air. Evan Roberts, in the intensity of his agony, would fall on the pulpit, while many in the crowd often fainted. Are you guys good? Do you want me to keep reading? How are, how are you guys doing? There's, one, there's a really good story that I think this was going to be the last thing that I was going to read. Do you want more? You guys tell me. Yes? 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 Okay. If you're good with it, I'll read just a couple more pages and then we'll pray. Because I know it's late. This is Aziza Street by Frank Bartleman. It's his testimony, real testimony, eyewitness. He was involved in the revival. I would recommend you guys reading this book if you've never... Okay, you guys are good? Okay. I'll read just a little bit more. This part, it gets really exciting. Then they write... <clears throat> This uh, English eyewitness writes of the later work in India. So this, happened, this is something that happened in India. The girls in India were wonderfully wrought upon and baptized with the Spirit in Ramabai mission. Under conviction of their need, great light was given to them. When delivered, they jumped up and down for joy for hours without fatigue. In fact, they were stronger for it. They cried out with the burning that came into and upon them. Some fell, fell as they saw a great light pass before them, while the fire of God burned the members of the body of sin, pride, anger, love of the world, selfishness, uncleanness, and so on. They neither ate nor slept until the victory was won. Then the joy was so great that for two or three days after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they did not care for food. About 20 girls went into a trance at one time and became unconscious of this world for hours, some for three or four days. During that time, they sang, prayed, clapped their hands, rolled about, or sat still. When they became conscious, they told of seeing a throne in heaven, a white-robed throne, and a glory, I'm sorry, a white-robed throng of people, and a glory so bright they could not bear it. Soon the whole place was aflame. School had to be suspended. They forgot to eat or sleep, and whole nights and days were absorbed in prayer. The Spirit was poured out upon one of the seeking girls in the night. Her companion, sleeping next to her, awoke, and seeing fire envelop her, ran across the dormitory and brought a pail of water to dash upon her. In less than an hour, nearly all the girls in the compound were weeping, praying, and confessing their sins. Many of these girls were invested with a strange, beautiful, and supernatural fire. Guys, I mean, guys, they started having things happen like this from Azusa all over the place. This book is full of supernatural stories like this. That was in India, but that was a result of the prayers of the saints. Now let me read you this last thing, and then we'll pray. You guys good? This was written by a newspaper. A newspaper, guys. Called the Christian Harvester. And you guys know that, that, that secular newspapers have been covering what's been going on on the West Coast. And they were not mocking of it. You know, they, they did it as you would expect a journalist would, you know, report something. And I believe that, that a true outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to get you know, respect from the press. So look here. This is what they wrote. Slowly but surely, the conviction is coming upon the saints of Southern California that God is going to pour out His Spirit here, as in Wales. We are having faith for things such as we have never dreamed of for the near future. We are assured of no less than a Pentecost for this whole country. But we can never have Pentecostal results without Pentecostal power. And this will mean Pentecostal demonstration. Few care to meet God face to face. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This is so good. The current of revival is sweeping by our door. This is true. We will cast ourselves on its mighty bosom and ride to glorious victory. Will we? I'm sorry. Will we cast ourselves on its mighty bosom and ride to glorious victory? A year of life at this time with its wonderful possibilities for God is worth a hundred years of ordinary life. Pentecost is knocking at our doors. The revival for our country is no longer a question. I feel this, guys. This is right now, right here. 
Slowly but surely, the tide has been rising until in the very near future, we believe for a deluge of salvation that will sweep all before it. Wells will not long stand alone in this glorious triumph for our Christ. The spirit of revival is coming upon us, driven by the breath of God, the Holy Spirit. The clouds are gathering rapidly, big with a mighty rain, whose precipitation lingers but a little. Last paragraph. Heroes will arise from the dust of obscure and despised circumstances, whose names will be emblazoned on heaven's eternal page of fame. The Spirit is brooding over our land again as at creation's dawn, and the decree of God goes forth, Let there be light. Brother, sister, if we all believed God, can you realize what would happen? Many of us here are living for nothing else. A volume of believing prayer is ascending to the throne night and day. Los Angeles, Southern California, and the whole continent shall surely find itself before long in the throes of a mighty revival by the Spirit and power of God. Written November 16, 1905. Only a few months before the outpouring on Aziza Street. I mean, we could keep reading forever and ever and ever. But you know what I'll do? Maybe we could read just a little bit of this for our prayer time every night and make it shorter. And maybe read like five minutes a night. And I could read some, some of those cool stories in here to you guys. Because I feel like the Lord is telling me to stay in this book right now. Because what we see... What we see in here, guys, this is what's going to happen. Because William Seymour, he, he prophesied that God was going to do this again and greater. And greater, guys. But what preceded the outpouring? Here's my question. What preceded the outpouring? Let's look at what brought that about. It was travail. It was compassion. It was repentance. It was the hunger for souls. It was... It was the, the desperation for it to be God and not men. This We need to say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, breathe on us. Blow on us, Lord, like a mighty rushing wind. And may we not move unless we move with you, Lord. May we humble ourselves. May we really, truly humble ourselves. You know, I can't raise myself up and say I'm some great, some great thing that has some great message for you, some great word, except God's mercy and his love and his, his desire to heal you, his desire to have mercy on your life just like he had on mine, his desire to use you, his desire to use you to set people free, you know, his desire to move through us, intercede through us. No, Holy Spirit, come upon us again. Holy Spirit, baptize us again. Holy Spirit, breathe. Breathe on us, God. That we would be truly a people breathed on by the Holy Spirit, Jesus, as you breathe on your disciples. That we would truly be submitted to the Holy Spirit, yielded to the Holy Spirit, yielded to His voice, guys. And when we go out, don't be afraid that you're not, don't have the power enough to heal the sick. We've got to, we've got to kill the lie, guys. Kill the lie. Because what happens is we think we're still Mary the prostitute, the one that wept at Jesus' feet because he had forgiven her of her many sins and, and, and set her free. And she loved him so much for how much... He forgave her that she wept at his feet and anointed him with the oils. But, see, the problem is, is that we, we need to stop identifying as Mary the prostitute. But now, we're like, we're like the Mary that is birthing Jesus. And I don't want to say we're the mother of Mary, but let's use it um, symbolically. Let's become the Mary that carries Jesus inside of our heart, carries and births. Jesus to this world because if we go out and hang around our head reminding ourselves that we were Mary the prostitute that we were the one in sin and we keep seeing ourselves in this image instead of seeing ourselves like God sees us 
completely forgiven. He desired to have mercy.